Okay, here's your next example. So this is solve the triangle. And look at this. So first of all, what's given? We're given a side and an angle angle. So this is a side angle angle triangle. Use your law of signs to find all the missing pieces of information. So we've done this one. It's going to be exactly like number one. I'm just going to pause it and then afterwards you can check your answer. Okay, so if you will, check your work. Now, there's lots of different options here. So you didn't have to do it the exact way that I did it. This is just one particular um, way that I chose. Now, the easiest calculation that I can make is determining my A. When I came over here, I said, all right, I want to find B first. So I knew I had this um, relationship that I wanted to use. But then I was trying to decide between using sine of A um, divided by A and sine of angle C divided by C. And I realized that I would have to rely on my calculation for one or the other. So then I decided that this is the easier calculation and the more guaranteed one. So that's why I chose to stick with the sine of angle A over A for each of these. But you have options and if you do everything correctly and um, compute it right, we'll get the same answer. So don't feel like this is the only exact way. Okay, solve the following triangle. This time they gave us alpha is 20 degrees, beta is 50 degrees, side A is 4. They labeled the triangle over here. Um, we want to solve, uh, they gave us two angles and a side, so this is a side angle angle. Side angle angle triangle, and we want to use law of sines. So before we start, let's go label, let me do it in a different color, the given information. So this one is 20 degrees, um, beta is 50 degrees, so let me kind of keep this stuff, um, and side A is 4. Okay, so what we're looking for is we're trying to find side B, side C, and angle gamma. Okay, gamma is going to be the easiest thing to work with first because we're going to have, if we come off to the side, we'll have gamma plus 20 plus 50 is equal to 180. So what do we calculate gamma to be? 110 degrees. So that's usually, I'll usually start with my angles first. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is law of sines to calculate these. Um, let me just do B first, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to use my sine of angle B over B is equal to, now I can choose um, a different proportion. So I want one that's known and one that's unknown. So let's use A because it uses two givens, right? Sides given and also that angle was given. So I'm going to use sine of A, angle A over A. Okay, and I changed this to alpha because it was given as alpha instead of A. Alright, here we go. So we'll have 4 times sine of 50 is equal to B times the sine of 20 degrees. We want to remember we're getting B by itself, so divide both sides by the sine of 20 degrees. And then we want to put that in our calculator and we'll get approximately 8.96. Okay, so we found B, we found gamma. Next thing we're looking for is side C. So we're definitely going to use um, sine of angle C or not C, I keep doing that. Angle this time was given as gamma over C. Okay, and then let's use a again because A is given. It's a given and a given so that's going to be our safest bet. Not that it's our only option but so sine of alpha over A. Alright so go ahead and plug your information in for this calculation. Okay and plugging in that and uh, cross multiplying and simplifying we'll get approximately 10.99. So we found our gamma, side B, and side C using law of sines. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is the ambiguous case. So this is a side-side angle. 
is given. That's if we don't know the information about side A. You see how it's kind of left unknown? That's why we're considered the ambiguous case. Now we'll have um, four different cases that are going on here. If side A is less than the height, that means if this side is less than the height right there, you won't have a triangle because you could see that there will be that gap there and it won't complete a triangle. Okay? One right triangle is if A is equal to the height. So if side A is exactly the height, then you have it coming straight down there, which will give us a right triangle. And that would be this case. Two triangles would be if A is greater than the height, but it's also greater than side B. So that means it would be angled down this way, and that would leave us with triangle here and a triangle here as well. All right, so that would give us two triangles. And then one triangle, if A is greater than the height, right, so it kicks it out to this way. Um, and I might have a typo right there. Let me see. Actually, this is a greater than or equal to B, so typo there. So it's greater than or equal to side B, and it's also greater than the height. That means it's going to be kicking out to this way, and you would just have one triangle. Okay, so there's a look at the, the different cases you'll have on an ambiguous case, and we'll look at an example next. Okay, our next example with this, two sides and an angle are given. Determine whether the information results in one triangle, two triangles, or no triangle at all. Using our information that we talked about on the last page, solve any triangles that result. Now, not the greatest at these triangles, but basically this is what we have labeled where this is just denoting our height. Angle A, angle C, B, we don't know. This is what we're not sure of, what's going on with the side A. Um, since the relationship between side A and H needs to be determined, first thing we need to do is try to figure out H. Because if we look back on this last page, we want to compare A to the height, A to H, so that we can figure out which one of these cases we're working with. Before I do that, let me come put A is 7, B is 5, and A is 70 degrees. Okay. Okay, so just with that label, I'll come over here, and so H is equal to B sine of A for all of these. So the height is determined by B sine of A. So let's come back over there. Make um, we'll, we'll know H is equal to B times the sine of A. Well, do we have that information? Let's see. Side B, we do have that. So that's just going to be 5 times the sine. Do we know angle A? Yes, so angle A. So we'll put this in and we'll get our calculation. So H is going to be approximately 4.70. Well, we want to compare H to A. So we want to know, um, so if H is 4.70 and A is equal to 7 because it was given to me, then which one of these are we working with? So A is greater than H. So let's look back. A is greater than H, so that's here, okay? So we're good. definitely don't have, this is not the case. This is when A is less than H. This is when A is exactly H. So we're working with one of these. Um, there's at least one triangle, and also A is greater than or equal to B. So let's look at B. Is A is greater than or equal to B? So we have just one triangle. Okay, now with that in mind, we have, this time we have two sides, and let me see if I labeled this small side C, but we only have one angle. We, we've had three, uh, two, at least two angles in the last one, so I need to work with this. Let's, um, first of all, let's do our Use sign of laws of signs, and I'm definitely going to use A because I have a given and a given. So let me start with sine of A. I'm going to draw a line so I don't get this mixed up. So sine of A over A is equal to, now I need to determine either angle B or C, so it doesn't matter. I'm just going to go ahead and start with B. So I'll do sine of angle B 
over B. Now let's plug in these. Sine of angle A is sine of 70 degrees. Side A is 7. Sine of angle B, I don't know angle B this time, which is different than the previous examples, but I do know side B. So as long as we have three knowns and one unknown, it's algebraically going to solve for the unknown. So then let's cross multiply here. So then this would give us 5 times the sine of 70 degrees is equal to 7 times the sine of angle B. All right, first thing, let's get sine of B by itself. So divide both sides by 7, and I'll have 5 times the sine of 70 degrees divided by 7 is equal to the sine of B. Now let's think back to our tool when we were looking for an angle. What was our tool when we tried to get the angle by itself? sine inverse very good remember we had that property the sine inverse times the sine would give us just angle B well whatever you do to one side you want to do to the other side as well so we're going to take the sine inverse of each side so if you will in your calculator be very careful to make sure you use the inverse function and then that will give us our result for angle B which is approximately 42.20 is approximately angle B Okay, now I can come back up here and calculate C by the fact that um, we have 180 degrees, or wait, we could say angle C plus 70 degrees, that was already given, plus the 4220 that we calculated for B, they should all total to be 180, right? So that would approximately leave us with angle C to be... 67.80 degrees let's go ahead and solve for uh, use our law of signs for side C now so if you'll set that up I'm going to use my uh, sine of A over A, we come over here, sine of angle A over A is equal to um, sine of angle C over C. So if you will plug in that given information and solve for that one. Okay, so if you check your work on that, you're going to get C is approximately 6.90. Okay, before we move on, I wanted to make a note. We automatically, when we got down here and calculated this, um, sine inverse we found angle B to be 42.20 but there's actually two angles of B that are between 0 and 180 that um, are calculated for this value of the sine of B is equal to 5 times the sine of 70 divided by 70 divided by 7 excuse me that would be the one we calculated and the other one would be 180 degrees minus this which would be 137.8. Now we didn't consider that, we didn't look at it because it makes sense. What was given to me? 70. And then if I use this one, it's already going to be over 180 degrees. So we know that this one has to be eliminated. Not only that, you can see that's also an obtuse. Um, or, yeah, this, this is a larger angle up here. So first of all, just A and B together, 70 plus this one is already over 180. So, and keep that in mind, cause most of the time it's only going to be the one that you're working with, but we don't want to ignore the fact that there was a second angle. We just can't use it.